What's up guys, today we're gonna be taking an extremely cracked dash and repairing it into something that's usable for under $120. So stay tuned, I'll show you how I turn this into this. It's a pretty good five footer, don't get any closer. Make sure y'all stay to the end where I do a cost breakdown of exactly how much it costs to redo our dash. So here is the current state of our dash. There are ridiculously huge cracks basically everywhere. So the first thing first is we're going to clean out everything. What I've done is scuff up all the old rust and then now I'm just gonna hit all the metal pieces in the back with some rust reformer. It neutralizes the rust. So I'm an idiot and forgot to film it, but I hit with most, most of it with some rust reformers. I think it came out pretty good. So moving on to the outside of the dash, the first thing I did was open up all the cracks with a Dremel tool. This is so that our fiberglass filler would have something better to adhere to. And then I give everything a once over with a sanding block. I then made sure to clean off the dust gently. Now we're gonna wipe her down with some acetone. It was now time to apply our fiberglass filler. I then added a little bit of the filler to a piece of cardboard. And then added the perfect amount of hardener. And we're just gonna mix her up a little bit. And this is where the absolute genius that I am shows when I didn't move the camera to get a good angle of actually putting the filler on. Uh, this is all I've gotten done from one mixture and it didn't even fill this whole crack and that's not the big one. That's the big one. This is the big one. After finally filling all the cracks, it was time to hit it with our first pass at 60 grit. Disclaimer, don't do this. Make sure that if you're messing with fiberglass, you get a respirator and some adequate goggles. I did this later, you'll see. So this was much later on. This is round three of applying fiberglass filler to make sure I get all of the holes that I possibly can. And if you notice the entire garage has been redone and cleaned up, I have an entire transformation video on my channel right now. So make sure you go check that out. All right, so it's been about a week and now we're gonna sand it down and hopefully put a little Glazing putting on it, sand it down again, and we'll be good to start flocking this thing. And to all the people who shouted out, hey, you need a respirator, thank you so much. And I'm really happy that I have some people online that, that care enough to reach out and tell me that I need one. So, thank you. This is what it looks like completely sanded. Uh, so now that the dash is done, we're gonna put on this glazing putty uh, just to fill in any little minor cracks, crevices. I do have gloves on. So it looks like a lot of glazing putty, which it is. Now I'm gonna go through and hand sand it with 120. The glazing putty was really easy to sand with 120. Oh, and dad wants to say hi. So as y'all can see, I hit it with another coat of the glazing and then I went through and sanded it off camera because I figured y'all have seen enough sanding and re-sanding and putting more stuff on and more sanding. So I didn't film it. I did debadge it. I should have done this earlier. I did end up getting a little bit of fiberglass on there. I guess we'll see if we can clean it off. If not, I believe they sell these, pretty much brand new. And if not, I can 3D print one. I can 3D print a custom one. It may look kind of cool, I don't know. 
So uh, I don't really know what to clean it off with, I'm going to be completely honest. So I'm, I have a little test spot with some acetone, um, I'm going to do another little test spot with alcohol. They both dry quickly, but the last thing I want is the glazing putty or the fiberglass resin to soak up any of that moisture before we go and paint it because it's going to end up being ruined anyway. So testing out a couple of little spots that you wouldn't really see either way. We're going to see what works best and I'm going to clean it off with that, get all the dust off and we're going to be ready for the flocking kit. Alright, so I've wiped it off with acetone, uh, let it dry for a little while, got it really clean, got it really clean. Now we're going to prep the flock kit. First thing you want to do is add the flocking to the can. So as to get it to about half full. Anyway. So now we're going to take this stuff in the can. Um, it's the undercoat adhesive. Because I'm not using this anymore after this, <laughs> I'm just going to pour the whole thing out. That way I can make sure I have enough. I ended up using a mini roller to apply most of the undercoating adhesive. It went on pretty easy, but it was really thick stuff. And then for all the little nooks and crannies, I used the brush that came provided with the kit. I then took our mini flocker tube and went to absolute town on this thing. I covered it crazy. The instructions literally say to use a lot more than you think and then add some. So that's what I did. And here's how it came out. All in all, I think this turned out to be exactly what I needed it for. Should I have applied the adhesive and the flocking kit during the daytime when I can see? Yes, absolutely. Um, also, preferably when it's not like 30 degrees outside, that would help. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take this, stick it in the car. Installing a dash is definitely a two-man job. This was ridiculously hard just to try to get a bolt in there to hold it up. I did eventually get the top four bolts in. And here's how it looks. For the first time in a long time, the car actually kind of feels like a car again, so. As you can see in some of the slow-mo shots, she's a pretty good five footer. There's a lot of places where it just seems like I missed a couple spots, didn't put enough adhesive and didn't put enough flocking. Could I pull it off, redo it? Yeah, am I going to? No, it's a drift car. This was never meant to be a full restoration, but I think for a couple hours worth of work, around 120 bucks, I think it was completely worth it. So a little cost breakdown, the actual numbers will be here. So I ended up buying some sandpaper, and I bought 60 grit and 120 grit. Bought those at Harbor Freight. The fiberglass Bondo was, I think it was like 30 bucks. The glazing putty was this amount. The flooding kit itself, I think was about 75. And I think for $150, it was 100% worth it. 100 million percent worth it. Look how much more realistic it's going to be when I sit here and pretend that I'm driving my car. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. And if you're still watching at this point, comment, comment your dream car. Like you get one car for the rest of your life. This would be it. Tell me that in the comments. That'd be cool. Y'all will do me a huge favor and drop a like on the video. And if you don't want to miss any more of our 2JZ Swap Dots and Drift build, wow, that's a mouthful, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. All right, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.